Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey. I'm back with another tricky question. This one looks particularly tricky. These are parametric equations, um, and it's an integration as well. I will show you the question, uh, because I know that some people like to do the question first, which is I recommend doing, absolutely. Um, but it's quite a long question, so I'm going to have to zoom out. Uh, so there's the whole question. Um, okay, so I need to zoom out uh, just to give myself some space. Okay, that should do it. Um, <clears throat> right, let's get into it. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to remember our formula for parametric integration. Um, and that is that we are integrating, uh, well normally we integrate y dx. That's just a standard um, integration. The, the function y it will normally be equal to some um, function of x. So we just substitute that function in and then if integrate it with respect to x. But in this case, uh, we want to do it parametrically. So we do dx by dt in order to, for us to then integrate with respect to t. So that's the formula for parametric integration. Okay, so <clears throat> I will start off with um, working out what the limits are. Let's start off with working out the limits. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, so normally when we integrate, uh, well, we want to integrate along a line. So that would be one particular line. That's the start of the integral. And this is the sort of end of the integral right there. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to find the t values that correspond to the points that are on the graph like that because uh, that will bound the uh, area how I want it. So uh, this line here, this point, x equals 0. So that's what I'm going to find, the t value for where x equals 0. So if x equals 0, well then looking at our x equation, that tells me that 2 cos 2t must equal 0, which means that cos 2t must equal 0, and when is cos 0, that's pi over 2. So 2t is equal to pi over 2. And t, therefore, is equal to pi over 4. OK, so that is uh, that limit there. So that's t is equal to pi over 4. OK, now let's look at the other limit. Um, here you can see that it crosses the x-axis, so y is equal to 0 at that point there. Okay, so let's solve for that. So y equals 0 means that 4 sine t must equal 0, uh, which means that sine t must equal 0, which means well, sine is equal to 0 at 0, and the other time it's equal to 0 is pi. But that's going to be outside the range because t is only between 0 and pi over 2. So in that case, t is equal to 0. So right there, t is equal to 0. Okay, so those are our two limits. Now what we need to do is just set the integration up. So I'm going to be integrating between um, the low, the upper limit, which is always the one on the right, uh, is 0. So 0 goes on the top. And pi over 4 goes on the bottom, like so. OK. Um, and we've got y, which we know is 4 sine t. So that goes in there. And then we've got dx by dt. OK, well, I haven't worked that out yet. So let's just write x is equal to 2 cos 2t. Now, how do I differentiate that? Well, when I differentiate cos, it goes to minus sine. But because it's a 2t, I've got to take the derivative of uh, 2t, which is 2, and multiply through. So I'm going to end up with minus 4 sine 2t. So times by minus 4 sine 2t uh, dt. OK, and this should give me my region that I'm looking for. OK, so let's do a little bit of tidying up. This gives me minus 16 sine t. And sine 2t is, of course, 
2 sine t cos t, which we know from our double angle formula. Okay, <clears throat> so this is pretty much exactly what we need, um, but I'm sure you've noticed already the limits of the other way around, and there's a minus sign there. Well, a little trick that if you, um, if you multiply your integral by a negative, it's the same as flipping the limits the other way around. So what I could do is I can flip the limits the other way around, and that will cancel out that negative sign there. So I end up with just 32, uh, because 16 times 2 is 32, and then the, the two sines are times together to make sine squared, and then we've also got that cos t coming along for the ride. And that is that six marks done. Okay, let me grab some space and then we'll move on to... Um, that's not six marks, that's just setting it up. Okay, we've still got to find the actual, the actual area. Let's, let's get some space. Okay, I'm back. So we need to um, actually do this integration. Now, how to spot what to do here? Well, this is a classic reverse chain rule because we've got a function here raised to a power and that's multiplied by its derivative. So what we could do is we could take that yellow function um, because, sorry, the derivative of sine is cos. Uh, so we've got a function sine which is raised to a power and it's times by its derivative cos. And obviously we've got this constant as well, 32, but we can deal with that later. Okay, so what we do is we can say y equals sine cubed t. So I've taken that function sine, I've raised it up by a power. And then we can differentiate that and see what we get. Well, how would I differentiate that? Well, I would, um, I would take the power free and I'd bring it to the front. Um, and then I would keep the function sign the same, but I'd drop the power down by 1. And I'd multiply by the derivative of the function, which is cos t. So that's just classic chain rule, how I've differentiated that. Um, again, actually, I'll just do a little bit more detail. So just in case, you can skip forward if you, if you know how to do this already. But sine uh, y is equal to sine cubed. So we can say that y is equal to u cubed where um, where u is equal to sine where u is equal to sine t and then we can differentiate this one we get free u squared and we can differentiate this one we get cos t and then by chain rule if you multiply these two at the bottom together you get the overall derivative so that's why we've got free u squared which is the same as sine squared times by cos. Okay, so that is the chain rule. <clears throat> now, we're here, and I want this to be, essentially, I'd love it if this was 32 sine squared t times cos t, but it's not quite, is it? What we can do is we can, um, we can multiply this by 32 over 3, and that would give me exactly what my integral is. So if I do that to this one at the top as well, then now this works perfectly. This at the top, this y function here, this differentiates into this one down the bottom, which is the integral I'm trying to find. So if this differentiates to that, it means that this integrates to that. So therefore, my integral r is equal to, now I've integrated it, it's going to be 32 over 3 sine cubed t, and that is between pi over 4 and 0. <clears throat> okay. Right, love that. Reverse chain rule. This differentiates to that, which means that this integrates to that. Okay, now we've got to sub in, haven't we? Okay, so what is sine of pi over 4? Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, or 1 over root 2. Let's go with, um, let's go with root 2 over 2. So times by root 2 over 2 cubed. 
And then what is sine of zero? Well, it's just zero, so I don't need to take away that zero um, uh, limit there. Okay, uh, it wants the exact value of r, of course it does. So that's 32 over three. Um, that's going to be two root two when I cube the root two, and that's gonna be eight when I cube the bottom. The 32 and the eight can cancel out uh, by a factor of eight. So this leaves me with eight root two over three. Perfect. Okay, part B. So we need to show that all the points on C satisfy this equation. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to um, take our power matrix and eliminate T so that it's just in, in terms of Y and X. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to start off with um, x is equal to 2 cos 2t. So I know that cos 2t has lots of different transformations. Um, it is cos squared minus sine squared. And we can replace the cos squares and the sine squares. And the one I'm going to use is this one, uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared. Uh, I've chosen that one because... Well, y is equal to 4 sine t, so it's going to be useful. Okay, um, let's multiply out. So I get 2 lots of minus 4 sine squared t. Um, and I can see that I really, I'd love, well, f what is... Um, We need to substitute this y value in here, aren't we? We need to sub this in. Um, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to first square it. So when I square it, I get 16 sine squared t. Now if I times this all through by four, then this is gonna give me 16 sine squared t. So I can replace that straight in there now. So 4x is equal to 8 minus y squared. And then all I need to do is make y the subject. So I move it over to this side and minus the 4x from that side. And then that allows me to finish off by just square rooting. So it looks to me like the square root of well, minus 4x plus 8, I can write it like that, so it's in exactly the same form as they've asked for. So a is equal to minus 4, b is equal to 8. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, part c, it says the curve has the equation y is equal to f of x, where f is the function f of x is equal to what we just had before, between minus 2 and 2 for x, and A and B are the constants found in part B, state the range of F. Okay, well, um, let me just grab a little bit more space. Well, in order to, f I mean, the starting point where I'm trying to find the range is just sub in the minimum and the maximum points of the domain. That seems the most sensible thing to do. Uh, so this would give me Y is equal to, when it's minus two, we would get, uh, that would be eight plus eight, which is root 16, which is four. And when X is equal to two, I would get Y is equal to um, minus eight plus eight, uh, which is zero. Okay, so it seems to me that it's going to be in between those two values it seems pretty continuous to me i don't see any reason why it wouldn't be uh, it's one mark so i'm pretty happy to say that f of x is between zero which it can equal because it can x can be two and it's between four because again it can equal that because x can equal minus two bosh hope you enjoyed that see you tomorrow bye for now